Hello, welcome again to the Simple Bible Study, picking up today at Romans chapter 13 uh, as we move through this great book of Romans. So as you grab your Bibles, um, we're going to open up in a quick word of prayer and go from there. So uh, Lord, it is such a privilege to continue to go through and learn your word. We pray God that this lesson will be a blessing to each and every hearer. It is of course in Jesus name we pray. Amen and amen. So we've come to Romans 13. We're almost through with this great book. I'm sad to to, to leave it. <laughs> uh, but uh, we've come to this 13th chapter, and this is the, the practical teaching section of this letter. Uh, in, in chapter 12, which was the first uh, chapter of this section, uh, Paul taught us how to live and relate to other people. And now in chapter 13, he's going to start talking to us about how we relate to government, how we function, we Christians function within a society. He, he, he's going to get a little political here. And I know they say you shouldn't mix religion with politics, uh, but but they, they forgot. <laughs> they forgot to tell Paul uh, that you don't mix those two, you see. Uh, uh, Paul, uh, at First Peter 2, uh, the Apostle Peter tells us, uh, at First Peter 2 and 11, I'll turn there. The Apostle Peter says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. We're strangers and pilgrims down here. And at uh, Philippians, uh, Philippians, the third chapter, and about the 20th verse, the Apostle Paul says that our conversation or our citizenship, that's what that word there means, our citizenship is in heaven. And that's true. And that's true. But even though our citizenship is in heaven, we do still live down here. And we still have to work under this earthly system and government. And so Paul is going to tell us as Christians how to do that. And so at verse one, he says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Now, that's the government he's talking about. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. And Paul starts out right away with a statement that might get him kicked out of some of the major churches in this country today. <laughs> he says that we all as Christians, listen to this, need to be subject. And that word subject is a, is, a, is a tough one for folks because it means we need to be obedient to the higher powers, to the government. My, my, you got some preachers running around saying that the guy in office is not my president. And some church is talking about overthrowing the government and, and, and they don't like the political party in office. But Paul says here that whichever political party, Democrat, Republican, Independent, it don't matter. He says, whoever's in power, we are to submit to them. Oh, that'll get him kicked out of some churches today, I'm telling you. <laughs> in fact, at 1 Timothy, the second chapter, and about the first verse, Paul says, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayer, uh, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Listen to him here at the second verse, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a, a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. He didn't stop there, though. He's got more to say about it. There at Titus, the third chapter, and the first verse, put them in mind to be subject, there's our word again, subject, obedient, to principalities and powers to obey magistrates to be ready uh, to every good work. And then we're going to turn again back to our buddy Peter at uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 and the second verse. Uh, Peter says here, I'm sorry, the 13th verse, submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. 
He says, for so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free and not using your liberty as a cloak of maliciousness, but as servants of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. <laughs> and so the word of God makes clear we are to be uh, subject to uh, the leadership of government and we are to pray for them. If you're a child of God, you don't do what the world does. We don't play politics. I don't care who they are. If they are in power, we are to subject ourselves to and pray for them. That is the clear teaching of the word of God. And Paul makes clear why. And in this verse we just read, for there is no power, nobody's in power unless God put them there. <laughs> they are ordained they are ordained of God. That guy in office you don't like. Well, guess what? You may have not have voted for him, but God put him there. Listen to the prophet Daniel at, at Daniel, the second chapter, the 21st verse. And he changeth the times and seasons. Talking about God now. God, he removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to them that no understanding. God put them in office, okay? <laughs> Remember that you you go down and vote, and ain't nothing wrong with voting if you vote. Uh, but God casts the deciding vote. His ballot is the one that determines the election. I know somebody's gonna say, "Well, what about when the government tries to make you do evil or wrong or or something like that? What about great men like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who went against government? What about some of these new laws that ask us to participate in ungodly things?" Well, let me say this, uh, uh, they are, uh, there's a limit to our obedience and subjection, okay? And so we are to obey government, we are to follow government, but there is a limit. And we see that example when we study the book of Acts. We're going to turn there now to Acts uh, chapter 5. Uh, the, the apostles were told by government, <laughs> they said, uh, let's read it there, Acts 5, 28. They said, did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? Now, the government had told them, you don't, don't you preach in the name of Jesus. <laughs> don't you tell people about Jesus Christ. And here in verse 28, it says, and behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. You see, when there's a conflict between what God says and what government says, we choose God's way. <laughs> now, every other time we, we, we do what the government tells us to do, we live as, as, as peaceful citizens. But when they step in and try and overtake the word of God, then we have to step in and let them know we will do things God's way. We will obey God rather than men. When Martin Luther King Jr. saw injustice, he merely stood on God's word and stood against the government and stood up for righteousness. People call that man Dr. King, but they try and forget he was Reverend Dr. King. <laughs> that man was a, a, a was standing on God's word. He was a, a Baptist preacher, you see. And so we as believers in the word of God, we put our trust in him, or at least we say we do. <laughs> we, we, and if, we, if we that are believers and put our trust in him are being asked uh, to say marry homosexual couples or to affirm transgender ideology by the government, uh, uh, we can't do it. <laughs> we, now, we love those individuals. We call them to Christ through the power of the gospel. And, and, and we treat them with the dignity that they deserve as creations of God. But God's word condemns those actions, and we cannot go along with those. I hope somebody's saying amen to that. All right, <laughs> let's read on. Chapter, verse 3 says, For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Will you then not be afraid of the power? Do which do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if you do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. He is the minister of God, 
a revenger to execute wrath uh, upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, ye must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. Now, Paul says something very interesting here, and, and I hope some of the defund the police advocates <laughs> are listening uh, to this uh, because there are people that, that, that hate the police, you know, uh, down with the blue and all that kind of thing. But Paul says here, if you are if you are not up to no good, then you don't need to worry about the police. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Now, I know there are bad police officers. Don't get me wrong. I know. I know there's built in racial bias within the systems and structure of various law enforcement agencies and all that. I get that. I get that. And I wouldn't dispute any of it. I know all of that is there. There's There's been studies, there's, there's statistics, all of it that prove that these things exist. But I want you to think back a little bit and, and, and think about something that may get me in a little trouble here. That's all right. <laughs> Might get me canceled. <laughs> but I got to say it anyway. Think back to many of those people shot by the police when they were unarmed or armed or beaten up by the police or something along those lines where people protested and all that. And if you really think about it, those folks who had these things happen, and it's tragic when those things happen, don't get me wrong, and it's, many times it's wrong. The police overstepped. They shouldn't have acted as, as uh, aggressively as they did. But when you really think about it, in most of those cases, many of those people were doing something they had no business doing. Now, think about it. Think about it. <laughs> Now, I know there's exceptions. Uh, yes, I know there's exceptions to that. But just think of, don't shout me down yet. Don't shout me down. But just in many of those cases, people who ended up in unfortunate circumstances and unfortunate altercations with the law started out by doing something they had no business doing. A couple of years ago, there was a gentleman uh, who we all watched horrifically die under the knee of an officer. And, and that was all the way wrong, and I'm glad that officer's in jail, and I hope they throw away the key. But it's also true that that man was trying to use fake money to buy something and, and, and rip off people. He had illegal drugs in his system. Now, again, he didn't deserve to lose his life. I'm not saying that at all. But it's also true if he wasn't doing something wrong, he wouldn't have even had to face those police officers. Uh, I know there's injustice in the system, and I know people uh, who are poorer are more likely to steal because we have less, and, 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 and there's some well-intentioned people who say it's not fair that a poor, usually person of color is more likely to be arrested, and I get that, but that's not an excuse for doing wrong, and just because I'm more in need or just because I'm poor doesn't make it okay to break the laws. <laughs> And, and and by the way, do you do you see that? Do you see that answer to the injustice in the system? It's it's not criminal justice reform. It's not uh, 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 defunding the police. The answer to the injustice in the system is for more people to serve Jesus. Because if you're serving Jesus, you aren't breaking the law. And if you aren't breaking the law, usually you don't have these confrontations with police officers. Oh, I know that's, that's unpopular, isn't it? <laughs> but once again, Jesus is the answer. If you put your trust in him, you won't do the things that cause you to have to deal with the police or this system. Well, I better leave that alone. All right, all right. <laughs> but Paul is getting political and he's getting this preacher in trouble. Verse six says, for this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. He says, Christians pay your taxes. That's how the government is funded. That's how the police officers that protect us get paid. That's how the sewage system is 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 carried from, from your house. Uh, 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 and, and, and the, the sewage is carried from your house to, through those uh, uh, those ways, that those, those, those paths that have been uh, uh, built by governments. That's how the, the clean water flows into your house. That's how the electricity gets flowed into your house, through your taxes. Paul says, pay tribute. Right. Paul, Paul won't get the crowd to shout and dance with this message. <laughs> he, says, <laughs> he says here that the leaders, uh, in verse four, for he is the minister of God to thee for good, 
But if you do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. He called the 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 leaders, the governmental leaders, the police, he says they are God's ministers. I bet you never thought that crooked politician in office uh, <laughs> was a minister of God, but that's what the Bible says he is. Oh, not a religious minister, but he's been placed in that office by God and anointed to be there. Uh, and by the way, that means they have an obligation to God when they get there, and they're going to answer for neglecting the poor. They're going to answer God for cutting crooked deals and cheating and setting up deals for his buddies and cronies and all that. I feel sorry for them, honestly, <laughs> when they get in there and do wrong. So before you run for office, if you're listening to me, I, I would go and read the book of Kings and see how God deals with wicked rulers, if I was you, uh, because you, you don't want to be dealt with by God. And so verse seven says, render therefore to all their dues. Tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, uh, fear to whom fear, and honor uh, to whom honor. And so it's all about respect. It's all about uh, you Christians now, as Christians, as believers in God, it is all about giving that honor and that respect. One time I was driving, and my son uh, uh, was a teenager, he's still a teenager, teenager, but this was a couple of years ago, and he was with me. And this officer, white officer, pulled us over, and I wasn't doing anything wrong, so I wasn't that worried, although I had been watching the news, and this is around the time all that police brutality talk was going on. And so um, I, 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 he pulled us over, and I put both my hands on that steering wheel, and I held it. And I explained to my son, son, I want him to see my hands, because if I'm a little scared, if I'm a little concerned, think about him. He doesn't know what I might try and do. He don't know if I'm going to pull out a gun. He doesn't know. So I want him to know by letting him see where my hands are that he doesn't have to worry about me. He, he wants to get home to his family just like I do. And so the officer walked up to the window and I said, how can I help you, officer? And I said, yes, sir. And no, sir. And, and somebody might say that's weak. But I was trying to show my son. Uh, that I uh, uh, that I have respect, that I'm I'm respecting the the badge that the man has on, uh, 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 I, you, you know that that's the whole thing. I am respecting the authority that God gave this man. Honor to whom honor is due. Now somebody may say that's weak, man. That's <laughs> that's what you ought to tell that officer off. He pulled you off. He pulled you over and all that. You ought to tell him off. But let me tell you what. That big white officer handed me my speeding ticket. By the way, I was going pretty fast. <laughs> he handed me my speeding ticket and I drove away and I went home to see my family. And hopefully he made it home that night to see his family. And you can call that weak, but I say it's wise. And it's what God's word says is right. Give honor to whom honor, give respect to the government. Oh, that's unpopular. We won't shout and dance over it, but that's the absolute truth, and it is the wisdom that'll get you through this life. We'll cut it off there and pick up again next time. Hey, thank you so much for joining. God bless you.